The German elections were a surprise to some, some perhaps expected it, but the, effectively the top line is Merkel weakened uh, by the result, particularly looking for now to form a coalition in government which won't be as strong as what she had before. Marcus, let's go to you. <laughs> Did you expect, honestly expect, the result that came out, particularly Absolutely. for the AFD? Absolutely. Uh, I, th I think AFD missed um, to have a much better result, even, uh, because of internal problems uh, and because um, of a campaign that was um, a bit, yeah, a bit problematic because of internal problems. I mean, a, a bit problematic would yes, be a bit, a bit um, of an understatement, surely. Uh, but, but this is, um, well, maybe, maybe too special um, uh, for the people in, in the UK. Uh, but, of course, I, I expected a strong um, outcome for AFD. Uh, it was pretty clear that the uh, CDU and the CSU would be a lot weaker than before. Um, it was pretty clear that Martin Schulz for the SPD couldn't make a better result. Um, and um, it is, the outcome is very interesting because the CDU, the former so-called Conservatives, can't can form a coalition with the socialists. The socialists have refused to form such a coalition. There is another option. That means the CDU, CSU, together with the Liberals and the Greens. This is the Jamaica option, is it? The Jamaica option. Yeah. This, well, I, I can't think of any reason why they should do this, because the Liberals have tried to be somehow right-wing populists as well during the campaign. But haven't the Greens oh, oh, been in government before? Uh, with, yes, with, they have, well, but yeah. not, not last time. They, mm -hmm. Of course, they've, have they've, been. they've been in government with the socialists before, mm -hmm. but, but not last, uh, no. last mandate. The, but the Liberals can't explain to their voters, or, or a large uh, share of their voters, how they can be partly right-wing populist, but then go into a government when, with the what's Greens. What's your definition of right-wing populist? Mm. Well, I'm a good one. So what, what, is, <laughs> what is that? Just for you, because you're labelled in the UK and the UK press as a right-wing nationalist party. Well, I'm not a nationalist. So you would reject uh, that label of the AFD being a right-wing nationalist well, party? Part, well, there, there are nationalists within AFD. I, I wouldn't label myself as one. Um, but... Um, well, it, there is a wide definition of, of what is right-wing populist. Uh, I see another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, is right-wing populist uh, anti-immigrant? Uh, yeah. Is this? I mean, no, what, is no, it anti-immigration? No, anti I, mean, I would say there is a distinction between some of the stuff coming out of the AMD and even at its worst, some of the stuff that came out of in you know a UKIP day, uh, which has yes. a particularly bad soundbite. Yeah, I mean, it, there is a quite clear definition. So you would reject being called a right-wing nationalist? No, well, I, I, I'm not. I'm what about not, your party? I'm definitely, your party? definitely not. Mm. Well, it, it is partly. This is, this is what, what I'm going to leave the party um, by next week um, because of many other reasons as well, but, but this is one part of... of I just want to wanna, wanna grab onto that. What's going to happen to the AFD, do you reckon? Your, your party seems to be, and perhaps you can elaborate on this, completely split now. It's managed to be the, become the third largest party in Parliament. I mean, is it going to be an effective voice at all? Or is it going to be uh, become just a fractured, in, you know, infighting political organisation? Well, we have 94 MPs um, in German Parliament now, and whatever party they they're going to belong to, they'll be a strong voice against what Angela Merkel um, means to to the German public, and it's going to be very interesting. If we gonna see Angela Merkel as the new chancellor anyway, I, I it's not sure. Should she resign? It might happen. It might happen. Because but it, should she, do you think she needs to? It, uh, her resigning is a necessary component of achieving a coalition which is going to be able to deliver anything. I think the only option is a coalition between the socialists and the CDU. Mm. And, and do you think Merkel resigning is a necessary part of that? From your, I can't think of as. I can't think of um, the socialists being part of a government with Angela Merkel. I don't think this is going to happen.
Right. So it would, that would be then, therefore, mm, she would need to resign maybe, as, a, as a component. Maybe this is going to be the reason why she resigns. OK, well, let's, let's, look, at, let's look at the bigger picture mm. stuff, because Germany is obviously a powerhouse within Europe and mm. European politics. Merkel was indeed, as, and has been, a significant figure uh, in European politics. Deirdre, yeah. did you expect it? But more, more than that, do you think that Merkel is weakened to the point of you know, German involvement and influence in European politics and policy is going to be significantly less now. Well, Angela Merkel I'm a, is a member of the grouping. I'm on the EPP, the European but People's Party. Yeah. So I, we had expected, because I've heard from colleagues who were campaigning that their vote, vote was dropped, particularly in the last two weeks, and that AFD vote was increasing, so our popularity was increasing. So we had expected that, um, that her perceived majority wouldn't be as, as clear-cut. Uh, I still think that Angela Merkel has a very strong role to play. Well, from my viewpoint in, and what I see around, she's a strong role to play. Within Europe sees her. Within Europe, a... because I think she's very important for Eastern Europe. She's very important in that, that bridge between, well, between Russia, East, the Eastern European countries, certainly led by Poland, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, all the, the Eastern European countries. Uh, I think she's a very strong link, and um, there, there is a, a gap there at the moment. There is the scene that there's, I think there is a, an East West gap, and that Angela Merkel can be. So she, very should, she really there. should be staying for the benefit I, of. For, for Europe, yeah, from my, my point, I think she should. Yes. Um, you mentioned. Um, and obviously, she's been weakened at home, and we'll see where the where the coalition where the coalition talks go. But I had thought that uh, Martin Schulz went into opposition to re-establish the SDP rather than. Uh, I mean, I didn't think it was a, 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 a related to any individual like Mrs. Merkel, but it was just to re-establish themselves. So, going into coalition okay. with Angela Merkel's party again, or any other leader. Uh, doesn't get over that fact for them. I mean, regardless, it's not, it's not Martin Schulz anymore. No, it's, yeah, it's Gabriel true. now. Yeah, well, one, yes, one right. thing I, re I yes. regardless of, of what you know, the AFP wants to uh, AFD, sorry, wants to uh, you know label itself right wing nationalist or whatever. It, uh, undoubtedly, the anti immigration sentiment was a very strong factor in your campaign, and indeed, some could say a very strong factor in your performance. What does that say then about the idea of freedom of movement in Europe? coming particularly because well, of the situation in Germany. Now, Stephen, perhaps um, mm -hmm. let's start with you. You know, is the, the idea of the indivisibility of the four freedoms, particularly regards to freedom of movement, really under scrutiny and pressure now? I think it's incredibly under stress. Look at the, the history of where it came from. The idea was that essentially six and then a little bit later a few more countries of similar economic uh, levels was able to create trade and one of those aspects was to have people flowing through that. But as you started to expand the European Union, the disparities between nations in terms of their economics and also then the ability of their really the educated elite to move to countries of greater wealth, thus creating further disparities in those countries, created the pressures that Marcus talked about, i.e rich countries now had to distribute downwards. And that then was added, what I've always regarded as Merkel's monumental madness, to open up the borders of, of Germany and effectively parts of Europe and create the pressures by which you have Slovenia, Hungary and Poland having really mm. big, strong arguments. Now, and, but look where Europe is now. Europe has a speech in the State of the Union, backed by Marcus Weber, the head of the EPP, of saying now we can't have African economic migrants coming over, that we must close the borders, that we must send people back. So the argument has shifted from freedom of movement to protecting the borders but, of but Europe. Steve, aren't you, uh, freedom of movement in European terms, we talk about the single market, it's about freedom of movement of European citizens. Yes. And uh, there's, uh, the migrants uh, econ or economic refugees or refugees who came, may come from war-torn areas, that's a different question Absolutely. completely. They're two I separate agree. issues. And should then, be. Uh, as they sh they sh uh, but the, the migrant issue from outside Europe was the issue in the German elections, I'm meant to believe anyway. So, that was it. so freedom of movement of European citizens is still very uh, strong, uh, it's important and it's one of the, one of the pillars on which uh, Europe stands and it's really cross, important the, the to protect that. Absolutely. The crossroads hmm? so of this, difference. the crossroads of this came probably about five, six years ago when you saw the freedom of movement starting to clash with economic migrants coming in and it's very, very difficult for a, a, a 27 or 8 nations to be able to have these open borders, not all of them because Schengen doesn't apply to everybody, no. but of course once you start saying Europeans can s settle, as soon as you brought lots of other people in who have the rights to move, that's where the tensions yeah. rose well, and well, there was no solution to that. This is the point. I want to come back, Marcus, I just, if I can mm. I want to come back to the politics of it because naturally, you know, Germany's influence with regards to freedom movement will inevitably be 
it, you know, a result of what's happening domestically in the politics, and that is dependent on the performance of the AFD to some extent as being this opposition party, third largest party in Parliament. I mean, is the AFD actually going to last? Because from what we've seen, you know, people seem to be fragmenting and leaving already. Is it actually going to be a sustainable presence, or is it going to fizzle out? This is what I, I really want to know. Is, is, there, is there anything really to this hype? Um, I, I think the party is going to work as an opposition party. I don't believe it's, um, it's capable of being a part of any kind of government in the future because I don't believe it is able to, to establish as a, as a party that is able to form the future. But is future. it going to be coherent in, in, in anything? Because you know, we have significant splits, and as you've said it yourself, there are elements of your party which you might want to distance from but have got a significant amount of media attention, um, you know, in, in very far-right uh, circumstances. I mean, you, will you say that as a... I mean, do you accept that that's, there is a presence of the, the very far-right in your party? The, there is a wide range of political views within the party, yes. I mean, are you... Because for Europe, it's a very fascinating... Are, are you ashamed at the fact that you have some people claiming to represent you who... Well, yes. I, well, there are people I, I don't agree at all uh, with. Uh, this is this is the reason why I think to, to have a range that wide within a party makes you unable to be uh, to, to, to to try and and, and do something something about the future. We 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 so have the you party can't was be an effective the, the, parliamentary the, party then. As an opposition, you you can. It is, it is very easy to be in opposition within the parliament. That is very easy. Yeah. Because you can always point at somebody and say, what you did was wrong. Well, easy. Usually it is wrong, somehow. So it's very easy to be in opposition. And this is going to work for AFD. But in politics, you should at least try to achieve more than be the opposition. You should try to form something for the future. And I can't see the, that AFD is able of doing that because the wide range of people within the party makes it impossible, as you said before. Mm. Right, OK, so just a quick then yes or no from, from the table. Fundamentally, the, the idea of freedom of movement, when it was a key election point in terms of the anti-migrant sentiment within, within the country, within Germany, do you think that the future of freedom of movement is particularly secure in Europe, if you just give us a brief answer as you can. Uh, I believe not. Uh, it needs to be readdressed, and actually, I think it needs to be suspended for a while until they actually get the systems in place. I believe the freedom of movement inside the European borders is sacrosanct and has to be protected. So, and, and, and it will and, and, actually but, in reality, and will, be, and will in reality, and that the your, your, uh, policing the external borders is the key to it. Is the key, Marcus? If we secure the external borders, freedom of movement within the European Union is not a huge problem, but that's something that's we the, yeah. need to fix. If that's, not, that's it's, not gonna, <laughs> it's not going to work. 